This episode of Film Rides brought to you by Domain.com. Welcome to Film Ride, the show that takes mystery out of the effects and techniques going to some of your favorite Hollywood films. I'm your host, Ryan Conley, and we collaborated with Hit Film to release a new short short, this one right here. Fruit something! We did this to help promote their latest release, Hit Film Express, which is free editing and VFX software. Yes, free. So definitely check that out right here, because free. Something smells like Gym socks dipped in depression. That's the smell of an actor. <laughs> <laughs> but today we are going to talk sound, wireless transmitters, and aerial footage, so let's do that. With any action film, sound plays a major role. I'm actually way more picky with my sound than I am with my VFX or color grade, since I know that the sound is going to enhance or ruin the viewing experience a lot quicker than anything else. You can even use sound to make people think that they saw something that they never did, or give the effect of something you don't have the budget to show. It really is one of the most, if not the most, powerful technical tool. And since this is an action film, all of that is amplified, so I made sure on set to get as much sounds to play with in post as possible, like sounds of walking and running on different surfaces, All sorts of interesting sounds from the location, like with the train. And extra sounds from the actors, like extra lines, breathing, and screams. <laughs> it all edits together much better since it was recorded in the same place with the same mic and recorder, which of course the mic we were using was my production mic of choice, the Rode NTG3, and the recorder I was using was my new Tascam 70D. It's a super solid, low cost recorder. It's definitely not at the level of a sound devices, but at $300, this is a very powerful recorder. It's got four channels, phantom power, of course, two mics on the front, and physical dials, which was one of the biggest reasons I upgraded from my H4N Zoom. For recording, we set this up to record to two separate channels from the same mic. The first channel was set to normal levels, which is what we use for 99% of the production audio. The second channel is set up as a pad for peaking. So if our character yells one of their lines and that distorts in our main recording, we still have that second recording that has its levels set much lower. So that line is saved there without distortion for us to mix in, letting us keep the original performance. A good example of how much sound can add to your production would be with this right here. Here's what the driveway sounded like originally. It feels super slow and wrong, but after Aaron Frinsley worked his magic, another simple example would be this right here. Back, 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 back. Hold up, what are you gonna do? I'm calling out direction through the entire scene, so none of the production sound here is usable, but again, since I was able to get a bunch of Foley at the location, I put that all together and now we have. Of course, music is playing over this in the end, but even with the music jacked up, you still feel the absence of sounds that should be there if they're not. So making sure you get as many assets to use later as possible is a major help in getting a great feeling and result. The other thing we were getting a bunch of questions about lately was how we got that wireless video set up to the monitor. Since we were running everything on the Ronin and Nepper was running around a lot, we needed him to stay wireless so he'd be free to go wherever he needed to. Most wireless systems are crazy expensive, easily up into the thousands of dollars, but this project was very low budget, so thanks to a suggestion from Nepper, we got this guy. The Narius Ares Pro, which is made mostly for transmitting video from your laptop to a TV, but it works great for this as well. It's still pricey at $500, but considering that you're usually paying closer to $2,000 or more for something like this, it's a very cheap alternative. You have two pieces here, the transmitter and the receiver. The transmitter is this flash drive looking thing here, which plugs right into the HDMI port on your camera. This needs to be powered as well, so we used a portable power pack that is made for charging cell phones while traveling. It was small and light enough for us to mount onto the rig and power that transmitter all day long. The receiver connected to the small HD monitor. This one I powered with this portable power source, which is made to keep in your car, but works great as a power source for small things on location like this as well. Once connected, it's super simple to sync the two up and then you have wireless video. The specs on their site says it works up to about 160 feet, but we were definitely cracking 200 feet and it was still working very well. 
well. Now I wouldn't trust this as the main setup that I'm lighting off of or setting exposure from, but as a director's monitor or even one that I'm pulling focus from, which I was doing, it's an incredibly solid lower cost solution. Domain.com has some dot .club goodness, which dot .club is universal and understood globally. It's perfect if you're building a new business or if you have a film and you're trying to create a site for it or a film startup for that matter, because if you think about it, businesses, ideas, they're clubs. The internet's all about community and collaboration, which makes a dot .club perfect. Go to domain.com slash club to register your dot .club domain. They're only $9.99 a year and thousands of great options are still available. And of course, be sure to use the coupon code FILMRIGHT to save 25% off your order. It'll save your money. Let them know you heard it from us. So when you think domain names, think domain.com. And now let's talk about this. pulled these off using the Inspire One, which is just a beast of a drone. This thing is all kinds of epic. On board, it has a 4K camera with a wide angle lens that doesn't distort, so you aren't getting that crazy fisheye situation of other cameras, which then you have to tweak and post. Then the camera sits on a three axis gimbal, which does an insane job during flight to keep everything nice and smooth. There was even one shot where the drone was hovering close to the ground that while playing back, Josh actually thought was on a tripod until he saw it start to finally move. All of this was controlled by Nepper through the remote control and an app which we had on an iPhone, and you could do dual operator mode with two remotes, which we'll show in another episode, but for this, Nepper was doing it all himself. Of course, since it was a bright day, we put the ND filter on the lens, then shot that baby into the sky to get some epic shots. Once up there, Nepper was adjusting all the settings of the camera right on the app, including setting the exposure that we wanted and hitting record. You have a removable battery here as well. Tap the power button on there to check the charge, and it has about 15 minutes of flight time with the battery, so you definitely want a few batteries with this guy when taking it out on shoot. The app is pretty great as well, it gives you an overhead map view of where your Inspire is and to see what direction it's actually headed in. It gives you battery info, camera info, and a ton more. But one of my favorite things off the bat was the flight simulator, which can be found by going into the app, then Academy, then Flight Simulator. And this is just a simulator for flying your Inspire so you are able to practice everything with the system before ever actually taking off. And the simulator is extremely accurate too, so it's actually very beneficial to get started in here first. Another great tip that I got from a friend before I started flying was if you've never flown a drone before, it's a good idea to buy a small $40 drone that you can fly around your house to get used to how flying one works. Now the Inspire will be a lot easier to fly than one of these cheap small guys, but you are learning how those controls operate. So it's actually really helpful to get your hands on something like this first before jumping to the bigger guns. We're gonna get a lot further into the Inspire One with a full review where we will dive in and show all its goodies and how it works, but there were so many questions on how we got these shots that I wanted to at least get a little bit of info out for you guys now. Because with this bad boy, you can get some shots like this. Logo. But that is it for today. Links to all the gear we talked about are in the notes. And two things before we go. First is that we are doing a massive sale starting August 1st, 50% off of all our digital downloads, up to 20% off some of our physical merchandise. So go right here to find more info about that when it's happening, what goodies will be had. The other thing is that we've decided to stop shipping physical merchandise internationally for a while. The main reason for this is the cost of those outside of the US who are buying our stuff. Right now, all the shipping costs are set by the shipping company. So we have no control over it. And some of the shipping prices have just been insane for people. So we're gonna shut that down for a while until we lock in a better way to make those products available without having those crazy shipping costs. So we will ship internationally again. We're just shutting it down for now until we find a better solution for those of you that are outside the US. Of course, this does not affect any digital downloads at all. So all the epic sales that are coming will still be available to you. But that is it for today. And if you missed me talking about it on Monday, Alex Bono is doing another visual storytelling tour. I wasn't able to attend any of the live classes last year, but I did get the videos for it and it was really amazing. Alex is an incredibly talented filmmaker and a really great teacher too. So if you have the money for it, I would highly recommend you checking this out. It really is like a mini film school. So go there to learn more about it. I'm not affiliated with them at all. I'm not getting any money from this. I just think it's really beneficial for upcoming filmmakers. So check that out and I'll see you guys next time.